Yeah, let's go. Charlie, <laughs> welcome to Sama Talk. We got it going on. Where does this uh where does this very call good. find you right now? Yeah, I'm calling you from a sunny or very grey Hackney Wick in London. Uh, we're just at uh, the office of our flagship site. Fantastic. And that's just, uh, is it south? Tell us where in London Hackney is. So Hackney is East London. Uh, we're right a stone's throw from where the Olympic Games was held. So this this area here in Stratford, where we've got another site, is um, kind of, uh, yeah, an area where there's a lot going on. The Olympics 2012, a lot of artists and creative stuff going on. And um, yeah, it's a good place to be. Beautiful. Um, are the saunas working right now? And how many saunas are over your shoulder? Yeah, so we, um, they are operating right now in Stratford and Hackney. So we've got, I think, 10 saunas fired up right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then yesterday we had another couple in South London. So we had 12 saunas firing and then also one in Normandy. So I think over the weekend, we've got 13 or 14 saunas firing, with potentially over 100 people in the sauna at any one time. Amazing, um, amazing. So and and at, at the facility in Hackney, right where you're sitting, how many saunas are on location? We've got, well, yeah, we've got six or seven in operation. I think one might be down at the moment. And we've got two ones being built in our yard as well, which is on this site. Um, so two new big ones. Uh, that are going to be ready in time for for the Saunaverse Festival on the 27th of April. Wow, that's fantastic. So if I'm a guest, to the, do you call it the Community Bath, or what's the name of the facility where you are right now? So we we are, yeah, the Hackney Wake Community Sauna. So we put the place name first, and then it's Community Sauna. That's, mm -hmm. the, uh, that's the way we're naming the sites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and how um how much is it if I were a guest to come to your facility right where you are right now? So right now, uh, the, the Hackney site we range from eight pounds fifty to fifteen pounds depending on the length and the time, and that's our base rate. Um, we operate like a variety of concessions and free sessions for various different groups. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the model. That's the that's, that's the pricing model we have for our for our uh, our um, permanent sites, and then for our pop up sites, that's like South London. We'll have a waged and unwaged options six pounds to, to enter unwaged and 10 pounds waged um, um and, just and the pricing is designed for, for those listening Sorry. wage wage and unwaged is a wonderful british term for employed or not employed is that right yeah yeah that that's it and there's an option uh, another option abundant to add a little bit extra on top as well um but uh, yeah, the pricing up employed or unemployed, or I think unwaged also kind of uh, covers people maybe who are earning so much or don't have as much disposable income. So it's mm. meant to be uh, inclusive, essentially. Uh, we want as many people coming. Um, and for those pop up sites, if, if people want to email in, if they can't, still can't access the sauna, then we'll find a way for them to come in, uh, mm. uh, either discounted more or, or in, in, in another way. So, so waged or unwaged, do, do I reserve my spot uh, via the website or how is that managed? So it's all via the website and that's, uh, that is just um, self, self diagnosed essentially if you're mm. unwaged or waged. Yeah. Um, right and what we find most, most people select the waged option. Um, I think there's like a, there's most people uh, will will, um, will select that, and we we appreciate that because we do we do need those higher wage tickets to run the business mm -hmm. and to run as a not for profit and pay yeah. all our costs. So, so, so I have yeah. my slot at say four p.m. on a Friday, and then I come down. and Is it free flow? In other words, I I pick the sauna I want to hang out in, and off I go. That's it. So you have a time slot, and then there's two saunas, maybe in Peckham and in Hackney, or have six or seven saunas in Stratford three, and you can just go between the ones. We try and uh, maintain a range of temperatures. Not always super straightforward uh, with wood fire to kind of maintain a real consistent, different mm -hmm. exact temperature across saunas, but they have their different characters. That like there's no uniformity to them. So yeah, there's, there's different styles, which is yeah, yeah. Free flow is the spirit. You you come in your That's sauna it. and you get on the bench where you want. Uh, how is the cold? Uh, I, I'm getting all technical, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the history of of the baths and stuff. But and prior prior to that, um, how is the cold managed on site? The cool yeah, yeah, that's been amazing. 
But that's been a major project of ours uh, over the last couple of years, bringing in the cold exposure when you're not in winter and, and cooling down the water. So um, myself, Omar, who's uh, in charge of our water uh, on our side, and then uh, Urban Ice Tribe, uh, Ryan Abbott, he runs that. Like We've all been working together using water cooling systems and chillers that we have outside that are chilling and filtering and cleaning the water with UV and uh, other filter mediums to make sure that we're getting people into the water, single digits, uh, under below 10 degrees. So there's that contrast therapy, mm. uh, there's that contrast between the sauna. That's super important for us. Um, uh, and as like a kind of grassroots uh, community organization, it's been a big learning curve that working with water and uh, some of the machinery we've had to use, but Ryan and uh, Omar have done an absolutely fantastic job. Um, so mm. big shout out to, the, to those two. Beautiful job. It's almost as if the heat is easier than the cold. Yeah, the heat really is a lot easier than the cold. Um, <laughs> um, but much easier. Uh, like that's not to kind of like dismiss like the active fire management and, and being a good fire keeper are like um, are like our skills. Um, but doing the doing, doing the water requires like a level of technical equipment, and um, that's maybe a little trickier. Right on, brother. Sounds great. So, Charlie, a little bit about your background. Tell us how sauna came to you or you came to sauna, you know, growing up or, and that and then how this um, uh, th this project came to you and, and give us a little time log of that, if you could. Yeah, sure thing. So I, I've been saunering as, as, as long as I can remember. I would have started saunering with my dad and uh, my brother. We would have been playing tennis or squash at the local sports club. And there tends to be a little sauna electric box in there. I don't think there's even uh, rocks to put the, the water on. But you go in there after, after a game and it would be like a really nice bookend with your family uh, just to relax and chat. And uh, not like properly a sauna culture with the contrasting or anything like this, but always a fond appreciation for that like bit of sauna. And I carried that forward into my uh, adolescence and early adulthood when I'd always search out saunas, saunas in London or when I abroad, try and find like a good sauna spot. Um, uh, and then uh, I stumbled across a couple of saunas in, in, in London that really changed my perception of sauna. Uh, the uh, Magic Garden, they hosted uh, sauna by Lost Horizons, which is a fundraising kind of party sauna magic experience uh like everyone buzzing and the real magic of sauna that like you'll only know if you've been chit chatting in a sauna and talking to strangers and like it was a clothing optional one and it was just mind-blowing and then the finnish church and rubber hive uh again a more like authentic finnish experience but from that moment on i knew that i needed to kind of do something in the space um that there needed to be more spaces like that and the city that i grew up in there just wasn't enough mm -hmm. um fast forward to Fast forward to COVID, we're coming out and I bored my ex-girlfriend, Silly, um, about talking about some of the members clubs and this project that I want to start. Mm -hmm. um, and coincidentally, uh, the, the project that I'm involved with now was doing a fundraiser. My friend Gabriel has pointed me in the direction of this and I, I've donated some money and I think you might have done as well. And I've emailed in saying, how can I help? Like, we need to get this, I, 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 I can help. And, and uh, some of my skills, my, my, my job as a consultant and my kind of uh, mm -hmm. financial and accounting kind of experience might be of help. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they brought me on. And before I knew it, I was, a, I was a director, basically in exchange for working for free quite a lot. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how it looks. Um, and yeah, that's what, that's yep. it. Yeah. Something yeah, a bit more, more like a Love the story. And that was the, it was, the title was Hackney Baths Community Sauna at the time, right? When the fundraising project was initiated. Yeah, that's it. Because I think initially um, it was a BSS fundraiser. The, the, the British yeah, Sauna Society. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. yeah, the British Sauna Society. And there was, uh, it was put in Hackney, I think, because it's a very creative area. There's the bath, there's the baths here. And then there's also a boating community and they they don't often have access to kind of uh, showers and bathing. So there was mm -hmm. a nice time. Yeah, yeah. That was, I think, the initial this idea. Right. Um, but yeah, they were right. It was the Hackney thing. And there was a big fundraiser. We tried to raise 150 grand. Very ambitious, uh, which uh, I think I look back and I smile like wildly ambitious to raise that mm -hmm. sort of money. Um, before the kind of like hype of sauna really kicked off, and, mm -hmm. uh, which is we see in the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, we didn't get it. Um, uh, but what we did get was a lot of networking, a lot of opportunity and relationships, and we got access to the site we, we have now. 
and uh, that enabled us to bootstrap to email the people who committed and mm -hmm. pledged the money myself and saying hey guys do you want to put like 50 quid in um we've got a site we don't need 150,000. we need 5k and mm -hmm. uh and i put I put a sauna in. I bought a sauna myself personally uh, to put into the project. And Victoria, my my co-director at the time, she had a lovely twenty persons uh, sauna that we we wheeled in. She she lent as well. And uh, next thing you know, we're we're operating every Sunday, um, and it's just mind blowing, really. In this, mm -hmm. uh, we cleared out the yard. It was a bit of a junkyard after COVID because no one had been able to use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we were saunering. Fantastic. Um, it really with, was with with two saunas at that time. One each donated to the cause, pretty much. Yeah. So they were there was they were they were lent at the time. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I and uh, the so the first like five six months they were they were like essentially given for free mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to to use. And uh, yeah, we the staffing was myself, Gabrielle, Og, Rob, my co-director, who's still there, and Victoria. We come down, we donate our time, volunteer to kind of host the sessions, and and kind of really learning as we're going, like this new site. And um, and uh, looking back, like the, I think the first time we sold out the session, which would have been twelve people, we were just uh, like, oh my god, I can't believe this! <laughs> I can't so believe. Beautiful. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that, and you know. Sorry, Charlie, that was 2021 when you first sold out, or is, is that right, or just pulling out of COVID? Yeah, so we set up, the company set up in 2021, March, or maybe a bit earlier, and then there was fundraising or the kind of trying to find a site for the, basically the whole of the year, and we found our site in November 2021, and we had our first session in December 2021, mm -hmm. and that was when we first had random members of the public coming mm -hmm. to our sauna, mm -hmm. and a few mm -hmm. of those people on that very first session still coming every week Fantastic. Um, and, uh, and uh, which is amazing um, so, so there you are you uh, sold out your first session uh big high five and then growing organically from there like once word of mouth or or how to and then the saunas grew as demand grew yeah tell us a little bit about yes. the trajectory from that period yes yeah, so it's word of uh it was uh, we we started operating on a sunday um and then after a few weeks we're like okay there is like quite a few people coming in um we had no funding it was all f money just from ticket sales uh and we decided to go to saturday and and then after a few weeks to friday and it was a slow organic growth in that respect of like opening additional days and word of mouth and people mm -hmm. coming back and every week the site would be changed so we'd modify it or improve it or put the put the money into kind of uh to make the site better and uh and it was just growing by word of mouth um we were getting some good press mentions but it was all, all organic all organic growth and um victoria maddox uh, she did a fantastic job like hosting the sauna gabrielle uh reason uh she's bss she was doing an amazing job building our website and marketing i was uh doing more of the boring stuff in the back with the like mm -hmm. business side and, and um and then rob and arg on site as well like, it was like a real nice blend of skills and mm. everyone, everyone kind of uh, contributed to this like, uh, passion project. Mm. Thank you. Awesome. Um, today, you mentioned 12 saunas right where you're sitting. No, you six saunas right where you're sitting in Hackney. Is that right? That's right. We got a we got a blend of like we got a big 20 person sauna and then we've got a, a, a mix of smaller um, kind of six to 10 person saunas. Um, uh, it's a bit of a hodgepodge. It's an organic thing. We've inherited mm -hmm. saunas. We bought saunas. We had them built, and um, so it's not a consistent, homogenous type of sauna uh, that you'll find. There's, they've all got their own quirks and uh, and mm -hmm. different experiences, and people have their favourites. Um, but yeah, part of the part of the beauty um, of the site, we think, it's just uh, it's it's very unpolished. Yeah, yeah, love that. Thank you for that. Part of the beauty of the site is that it's unpolished. I, I couldn't agree more. I think I think if I could, you know, for guests coming, maybe even the first time or or continue, you know, ongoing guests, the the fact that it's unpolished gives it um, a natural feel, so that people don't have to feel that they're on stage or that it's some performance. Uh, it's it's very probably quite disarming for guests just to show up and chill. Yeah, I think that's I think that's it. Like, and for me, I'm just really focused on we want a good heat, a good, good cold, and uh, for it to be a relaxing experience with staff and 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 um, 
that's what we really i really want people to have and like the cold and the hot to use a cheesy phrase that does the heavy lifting for us if we're yeah. like focusing on that clean and safe environment then that's brilliant it's, people are going to enjoy it lovely lovely so um you mentioned three facilities now three and then there's a there's one in northern west northwest france in normandy um is, is yes it, tell us about this this whole growth if you would in terms of other locations from beyond hackney yeah that's um so we're looking yeah looking to grow essentially we've got a new we have a new site in stratford that opened in december last year that's on a meme are you space which means uh, that a developer has bought the land and they're waiting for planning permission so we've got a really super uh, landlord hadley uh, property development group um that they own the land and they've they put us on a social value lease which means we don't pay rent and we and we but in exchange we bringing in a community benefit and working with the community to kind of give sauna access and and we, wow. we there's been an amazing partnership we're yeah. really um we're really lovely working with them uh, and then in south london we've just opened the site uh, in the community garden in peckham which is another like uh, uh, kind of type of offering we have working with these gardens that are mainly volunteer based and putting saunas into these natural spots in london and bringing in money and volunteers and people to these sites that maybe are struggling a little bit for funding and uh, and for people and and we think it's a really really nice um uh, partnership like an uh, example of cooperation on what sauna can bring to local communities um and our fourth one in in, in normandy my co-director rob he is uh, half french and he mm -hmm. he runs a festival out in a village in france and uh he took a sauna out there last year for the festival and then he's left it there and they've let him put it on the beach so i think it's the yeah. first beach sauna in in france actually they're a little bit behind uh, the yeah yeah uh, yeah you know charlie i was going to ask you about that what is up with the the french i mean like you look at this explosion <laughs> in great britain and in france i mean are, are they just kind of like you know riding their bike with a baguette and some wine and kind of missing the sauna yeah, boat yeah. or what's shaking on well, down there? That is it. I think so. Chatting with Rob, I don't know. That would be like stereotyping yeah. too much. I think the French, the French uh, are, are, are maybe a little more um, our own culture, so to speak. I think mm. us British, we're always looking for, and maybe the US is similar as well. They're like very uh, looking to other cultures to embrace new ideas and try new things. And I think some uh, maybe countries in Europe tend uh, uh, like to kind of stick to what they know. So it's, what's happening in France. Mm. Rob's uh, report from the is that there's uh, people are warming to it. Excuse the pun. Right. Um, and, uh, but yeah, there's not there's not really any on that whole coast. So potentially th there's an opportunity there because if you look at the UK and uh, mobile sauna on the beach, it's gone absolutely bonkers. Mm. Uh, there's hundreds of them now. And, um, yeah. And yeah. France has but, got a lot of coast. So. Yeah. Yeah. So Charlie, take a pause on that for a moment. You, you this this is fact. There are hundreds of saunas that are open to public reservation around the coast of great britain is that did i get that right um so i don't know the exact numbers but i'm on a whatsapp group and there's more and more opening on beaches uh, around uh, around beaches and coastal areas around the uk all the time um it's it's like a really strong use case um what there isn't is is many urban saunas and that's what we re we're really focused on um that that is a bit of a trickier um, setup co uh, process uh, uh, due, due to a variety of factors, and uh, but um, yeah, lots and lots of stuff by the coast, and there's a really thriving community. But most people don't live by the coast in the UK, so um, we think if we want to make an impact and really change UK bathing culture, we need to we need to get saunas open in, in main and, and community saunas, affordable, inclusive, and accessible mm -hmm. saunas into, into urban spots. Um, switching gears a little bit. So tell us uh, about your professional background and um, in in this full, like you get a paycheck. Is this your full time gig? So give us a little bit about your background and, and what what's happening with you career wise today. Yeah, so career wise, um, I, I was uh, I, I, I didn't finish university and I ended up, I came out of university a bit a bit lost actually and I was working with my dad for a while 
um helping him out and uh i had a good break and i ended up becoming a management consultant for an apprenticeship for one of the one of the big like firms in in the in london and and in the world pwc and uh so i was doing that apprenticeship there and i was there for five six years it was a great learning experience uh but for me like working in a big company and for and, and all those rules and stuff maybe not for me long term so i was doing that and i picked up a bunch of uh, things that i think were pretty useful for working in small companies or startups or environments like this and um i i then set out by myself to do some freelance consulting and in in that time I was doing various little bits and bobs i started a mushroom farm i um I like I dabbled in the sauna project at the start. I was working with a bunch of different people, including that, this uh, the drinks brand Agua de Madre that I was on the previous Zoom, and um, that's just really allowed me to slowly increase the amount of time I've spent on this sauna project. Where as to the point now, I'm full time, definitely, definitely full time, and I'm able to pay myself um, a salary. Uh, all all of our stuff in in the business though are paid above London living wage. Uh, like mm. it's a not for profit, but I think there's a confusion around that like that that like phrase like not for profit doesn't mean people volunteer the time or do it for free. We we really like to have well paying jobs for our staff, um, and uh, everyone's everyone what they're paid is kind of known within the team, and uh, and that, that that's the beauty I think like what we do it's it does pay and it and it does kind of like. Um, it is self-funded. Beautiful. Um, and it is not only self-funded, but you guys are philanthropic in your ways. You've been a big supporter of the Sauna Aid um, uh, initiative and organization and donated, you know, some some donated profits. Um, tell us, tell us about that. Is it in the bylaws? Who makes a decision on what to give? And um, a big thank you on behalf of Sauna Aid for your donations. Um, no, you're welcome. Um, so then, uh, as a CIC, essentially, that's a CIC for people who know is a community interest company. Uh, it's a UK company structure that sits between a charity and a, basically a private limited. So we still have a commercial mind, uh, and we but we basically have a not for profit directive and. Uh, we have a specific community that we want to serve that's stated in our company information and that is the sauna community so sauna aid really makes sense for us uh to to basically fundraise for that to be able to give some of our profits to to that cause or the profits from those sessions and that's specifically accounted for in the fact that like it is serving our community uh, so we're able to allocate uh find funds to that as well and uh, that was myself rob and victoria i believe was uh, with us at the time that would have been just a decision from us and a no-brainer really like that's that's mm. uh, something we want to support and it also slight change attack allows us to do the work we're doing in bristol we've just funded a new community sauna we've uh, we've given them a grant and we've uh, loaned them uh, a brand new sauna which they're going to buy off us over five years so that's mm. using our profits as well it's a completely separate company cic i'm not a director and we're able to just see these um saunas across the uk using the money that we've made here wow. so it's, uh, we think it's really cool. that's beautiful so not to sound too simplistic about it but with with um retained earnings or re residual profits there is the philanthropic arm where an organization like sauna aid uh, you were very generous in that and, and i want to give that shout out num number one but also number two is you you mentioned using profits to seed new sauna businesses it how does that fit like are you creating what we in america call saunapreneurs or would um would someone take the funds and then pay them back um and be part of the umbrella organization that that you work for um so it's we we want to do things a little differently uh so it's not a kind of classic uh entrepreneurial or uh, investment play um uh so with uh with bristol the, the people that we're looking for uh, are existing organizations or locations that can put sauna onto them already and maybe existing community organizations so bristol is a community center they had a space and they said they were setting up and we said like well we can help with the, the heavy lifting and some of the finance and some of the knowledge stuff and so mm -hmm. we were able to enable an existing uh, organization oh great um and the expectation 
the expectation on our side is that the uh, that these organisations, these people we're seeding, they're joining the community sauna network, and and it's not super prescriptive, but mm. that people contribute back into the network to start others. So mm. we're doing that to them, and there's an expectation that they're going to be there for the next one, or they'll make a contribution to say when uh leeds wants their sauna or birmingham we, we've already got bristol and london and we can we can help the next city um mm. but what i really like is the autonomy these places are separate there's no top-down directive we're not there's no like uh, fixed stuff going it's we, we we just want more community sauna more not-for-profit sauna yeah. and uh that's the only thing we really focused on so, so no profits back to corporate yeah, I think that's it. I think like there are no profits. It's not a franchise model. It's no like, yeah. profits back to corporate. There is, <laughs> so, there is. So, there, um, so there's there no corp there's no corporate meetings and bylaws and 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 uh, not, you're not creating uh, a vice president role that travels around and makes sure things are up to snuff. No, that's not it. Like what we do have, which may be similar to that, is the separate CIC, which we're going to be launching in a couple of weeks, which all people can be a member of, of one, mm -hmm. one member, one vote. Yeah. And so those contributions I was talking about for other ones can be centrally held, and they, they that money is just for basically seeding other, 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 other companies. And um, it's not a prescriptive franchise fee or anything like that. It's um, it's more like pay pay what you can and uh, and, and just a pool. Of Charlie, Charlie, as an American, sorry to interrupt you, but as an American, I mean, I, I have to like, how does this work? Like, how? I mean, how is it working? How are you able to maintain this spirit, like the spirit of trust and and contribution and philanthropy, um, and goodness? Um, and I say this because I come from a country that is known globally as being capitalistic, right? Like everything is a profit model and. You know, there there's organization and structure, and that's why I was kind of joking about that. But, 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 give us a little flavor. How how are you able to do this magic and and keep it pure and wholesome and from the heart? Is is what I'm sensing. Yeah. So uh, the first thing is maybe, maybe it will change down the line and we'll, we'll lose some of that. But the heavy lifting for us, in my view, is done by this company structure, the CIC, which is. Um, I think it's, it's a really useful structure. It enables us to be dynamic, to be commercial, and to use a lot of the structures and the business tools that like people are familiar with. But it keeps us just focused by law uh, to a certain purpose and the fact that we can't pay dividends, we can't pay shareholders. Um, so it just means that uh, people are focused and you want if you want to come into this, it's because you want a sauna, basically, and you want to mm. be part of something like this. And the other flip side to it is... Yeah. Um, is we, we we pay people well essentially like when it's not like lavishly but like if you come in here it's it's um we, we try and pay people as well as we can if you're in the marketing if you're in the a sauna manager if you're a sauna host uh like we, we're looking to pay people well so it's not a sacrifice to come and do something cool or uh or, or work in this work in this space so i think that's quite a big thing as well Right. I'm drawn to the, uh, the British band XTC and their wonderful song, Love on a Farm Boy's Wages. And uh, it, it's love of sauna, <laughs> but, but you're, you're, you're hopefully not doing this for, you know, for free or a farm boy's wages, right? No, no. So it's, uh, you know, I think London is an expensive city to live in. We do have the London living wage, which we which we pay above. I mean, I, I, I can't say it's like, it's like loads and loads of money, but it, it, mm -hmm. it is... Um, it is meant to be enough uh, to, to kind of get. So thank you for all of this background, backstory. I'm fascinated, as you can tell, Charlie. I mean, you know, letting us in behind the curtain of the operations of what you're doing and, and how you're growing is really, a, um, a, a, it, it's special. It's very unique. I've never heard of it working um, in other areas, at least in my country. I'm sure it must exist, this idea of, of growing without franchising and and, and growing with a cause, you know, this, this duality. And, uh, and I, and I also want to call out this concept of, you know, good sauna is like a candle that lights another candle. And you're an exhibit yeah. of that where you're creating this, the seed, you know, for a community to grow with sauna and then paying it forward to another community to light another good candle. Um, very special. I mean, I'm, I'm touched and I'm, I'm glad to share this, this, process with others like uh, and and maybe this could 
also be a candle that lights another candle for other communities, um, not just in your your country, but other places in the world. So big up to you, man, and making this magic happen. Um, <clears throat> tell us, I'm going to switch gears. Are we cool? Anything else on the work? Yeah, let's, I think that's that's. I just get just get a shout out on the, on that on the, on, the, on you thing. Wonderful. Tell us about a day in the life. Okay, this is your full time job, right? Like your sauna, you wake up, sauna's on your mind. Um, how far do you live from where you're sitting right now? And and I know there's probably no typical day, but um, you know, kind of walk us through what life is like for you day to day. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, especially not like we've really kind of kicked up a gear in the last six months a year so i may be getting overly personal here but yeah I, I used to live in south london and i split with my partner uh, uh, uh last year and now i got to move just uh five minutes walk from my <laughs> from the site so yeah. i'm really living that bachelor life, uh working just right <laughs> every right day and walking to work and across both sites and um but a day in the life for me there's we now have 40 to 50 people that are associated or work for us. So there's a lot of people stuff. Um, we uh, I'll be probably on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'll be dealing with site maintenance, people um, uh, dealing with the finance side of things. And then we'll also be talking to new sites and councils, like trying to open in South London. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll be dealing with a lot of communication. Um, yeah a lot of whatsapps and emails which is uh like being quite um which has been quite like a lot, lot to um kind of deal with from uh, for, uh like waking up six in the morning we'll have sites running all the way till 11 p.m so i'll be receiving messages all day long so so um, just pa a pause on that charlie so if i could kind of distill your your how you fill your day or, which sounds like there's no problem to do that you it's it sounds like half of it is operations with many many employees and all of the runnings of that uh, staffing um, people and, and or, organize that. And then not to be simplistic, but this other half of what you're doing is a lot of organizational stuff around growth and, uh, and future sites and permissions and all of that. Did, did, is that, is it that simple? Two parts of Charlie? Yeah, so there's that. And the third bit of what I've been doing this weekend is Easter weekend, obviously, and there's people away. So, and we've started a new site in, in Peckham. So I spent the last three days basically being uh, doing like the hands-on shift work in, in Peckham and supporting our staff because whenever we open a new site, uh, there's, there's, there's always a bunch of like problems and uh, things we've oh. got to solve and um, stakeholders to deal with. So I've been lighting fires, greeting guests today and uh, yesterday and the day before, which I really, really enjoy. Yeah, man. But, for, but for me, as you say, it's that growth, but we we're in this amazing site, and but if we want to make an impact, uh, we need to grow and have new partners, and and to and to kind of like get this get the message out, and that requires me talking with people and um, and and um, doing those kind of growth growth based activities. Right. So let's wrap up. Are you cool? I mean, I'd love to talk more, um, or do you want to just a couple of rapid fire questions? Wrap up. I want you to pick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's. Uh, so I'm going to pick the questions. Well, I could ask you a couple. Um, first of all, how can people find its community baths? Is that the the overriding name, or is it uh, what what is it's the name? Uh, so, if you community sauna is the, the the name, but I suppose there's a few popping up. So Hackney Community Sauna is going to mm -hmm. be the best way to find it. Google is that, that is it? Just find Google that. Google community sauna. Google that. Great. Yeah, community-sauna.co.uk. Community Great. And this is where people can dive in, see some photos, get get a concept of where it's at, and, and book a sauna session, right? That's it. And there's our Instagram as well, which people can see some of the events we do and some of the kind of like give a flavor of our sites. Um, so, yeah, you'd be able to find it there as well. Great. And to find you on Instagram would be? I think it's, uh, yeah, it's Community Sauna Baths. Uh, that's our handle on Instagram. Community Sauna Baths on Instagram. Great. Um, <clears throat> where would you like to bring this, a sauna, a, 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 we call it butts on the bench or the idea of reservation, like where in the globe, you know, would you like to do an outpost, if you will? I mean, we've talked about Normandy and how exciting that is. Uh, does a place around the world come to mind? um i 
well I, yeah for me the, the place i want to be the most is southeast southeast london um that's <laughs> not super exotic uh, that's been my dream since starting this project um so that's a boring answer um mm -hmm. but where else uh, all the other places have got like the play the finland japan like the exciting places they've already got their own culture but for me like getting spots into like urban environments in london where i grew up uh that is uh that's the most exciting and, and especially southeast london where it's super underrepresented this sort of uh this I, sort of experience. I, I love i love the answer and you know just to take this sauna talk full circle i imagine you growing up enduring one of those electro saunas after a tennis match and who, who knew that you would be doing what you're doing today and bringing good heat and the cold uh to to people uh every day it is a new is a new day for for people to discover this charlie every day and like we i think we we've taken over a hundred thousand people through uh for our sauna since we started now so like i can't believe that to be honest um really what a outrageous turn of events for, for my life um but yeah a hundred yeah to, to bring nice heat and nice cool to, to that many people and also the health and well-being benefits and the, the the happiness i've seen it bring people and myself at times you mm. know that's such a privilege to be in this space on that note, I just want to thank you for not just what you're doing, but ability to visit with me on this day. Uh, Charlie, thank you so much. And uh, I'd love to get on the bench with you soon. And I have a hunch we're going to make it happen, brother. Yes, very nice to chat, Glenn.